Right. Resistivity, what is it? Resistivity is uh, basically the uh, distributed resistance across a surface. Uh, you can check on Wikipedia under sheet resistance uh, exactly what it is and, and so on, how it's measured. I've uh, discovered that there's basically three ways of measuring uh, sheet resistance or uh, surface resistance of, a, of our mylar diaphragms. Uh, one is uh, just measuring it with a multimeter, uh, impedance meter across uh, any two points. That doesn't tell you much. The other one is a, uh, a ring sensor which uh, is, uh, I'll show you a picture here. Another method is the four probe method that basically uses the outer electrodes to send a current across the surface of the, uh, of the diaphragm. For example, 10 milliamps or five milliamps and the inner two probes actually measure the voltage across that current and uh, it uh, measures uh, the, uh, the resistance by virtue of uh, uh, v, on, v on I. The advantage of the four probe system is that apparently it is less, less likely to have contact resistance of the probes interfere with the measurement. The, uh, the other method is to use a square with two parallel contact points of, uh, for example, uh, 10 millimeters each. And what you do is you space them 10 millimeters apart. So you have a square of 10 by 10 and uh, by measuring the resistance from one side to the other you end up with uh, a resistance per square. That square can be any size but it does need to be uh, small in relation to the total area. The, the same with the, uh, the four probe system. Uh, th there's some statistics on what factor you need to apply. I've, uh, if I had a four probe system here of say, uh, I don't know, 30 mil long, I think the, uh, I would have to derate the resistivity by something like uh, uh, 0.7 of the, uh, of the, uh, what you measured. In the four probe system, Apparently you need 40 times the distance around the probe um, to uh, have that reading with a, a factor of one. So if I make up a four probe, probe I will need to uh, have it reasonably small, only 10 or 15 millimetres long all up. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll do that. I may actually build up a, a square type, uh, the two parallel plates of copper separated by, by the same width as they are long. So you have one square of, for example, 15 by 15 millimetres. And uh, that would uh, do the job, I think. Once again, it has to be small in relation to the area you're covering for greater accuracy. However, in the meantime, I'm, I'm unable to get out and and uh, buy the things that I need. So we will do a proper analysis of all of this later on in part two. This is just a, a primer to uh, get us started. And I'm discovering a few things already. Uh, one is that the the Honeytech high impedance meter that I'm using is, uh, well, it's sort of a bit unreliable. I, 
I can't quite get the, the numbers that I, I'm sort of expecting. Uh, the first thing is I would have thought that by shorting the probes I should get near zero impedance and I don't. Um, it's doing something really odd. What I need to do is to uh, get a set of standard resistors which uh, I don't have handy at the moment and uh, make up some little resistor ladders of uh, 1 meg up to say 200 meg and uh, just see what the uh, accuracy of it is. I, I have ordered another high resistance meter uh, which behaves very similar to this and uh, that may or may not be any better. Uh, we shall see. Anyway, in the meantime, I've been doing some preliminary measurements and what I'm doing is, as you can see from here, I've got a couple of dollar coins soldered on some stiff wire and put a, a little fishing weight on it so that it wouldn't flop around, make sure that it uh, sits reasonably flat on the uh, diaphragm like that and what I've been doing is that uh, that's a, a one dollar coin and I've been separating them by another dollar coin and that's been my sort of standard for this uh, rough measurement as I say when I build up a proper resistivity uh, probe, I'll, uh, I'll redo all of these and uh, it, it may simply be a, uh, a factor I have to apply so I may not have to actually go and redo all the measurements again. I'll, I'll just apply that factor, whatever it is. But this gives me a good starting point and it does seem to be reasonably reproducible, which is a good thing. However, having said that, I've noticed uh, some strange things across my panels. So what is the ideal resistivity? From what I've read, uh, it would appear that the resistivity uh, set by uh, Mr. Walker and, and the acoustical com company, it seems to be somewhere in the range of 100 to 200 mega ohm. And uh, that, that surprised me a bit because that's never what I was seeing with my measurements. But then again, uh, I have to consider that most of these panels I have are quite old and uh, maybe they've changed. And I'll get to that in a moment. So what are the measurements I've been getting? 